Hey, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a scheduled query so that if you want to schedule a query to run on a regular basis and output to a table, you know how to do that, which is something I use a lot. And there's, this is a very common thing in data analytics, analytics engineering. And a lot of people use a tool called DBT for this, which you might've heard of, but a simple way to do it in BigQuery is just with scheduled queries. So if you hit schedule query up here, enable scheduled queries, you have to enable the query API, which apparently can take two to three minutes. So if this takes a while, I'll just pause the video, but it looks like it just took a couple seconds. So, you have two options here, create new schedule query or update schedule query. We're going to create a new schedule query. And what I like to do is usually um, name the schedule query the same thing as the table I want to refresh. So let's actually go back here and just like double check what this table was. I named it birds underscore GT underscore 20K. So I would usually name this something like the same name as the table that it was overriding. This is going to run daily. You can also make it run hourly, weekly, monthly, custom. But just for now, we're going to do daily. We're not going to put an expiration on this. Then we're going to hit set a destination table for our query results. And birds is the data set. The table ID was this. And then we're going to hit overwrite table and then hit save. Oh boy. Um, so you're going to have to allow the BigQuery data transfer service. And your scheduled query was created. So if you come over here to scheduled queries, you can see that scheduled query here that you created and some information about it. It'll run every day at this time. The next scheduled one is tomorrow. Um, and you can click it and it'll show you here like all the different runs of your scheduled query over time. And if they were successful or if they started failing, you can delete it, disable it. You come in here and edit your schedule query if you want. Like if you actually wanted this to be something else, you could change it. Um, like, geez. If you wanted to make it uh, 21,000, I don't know. And then it looks like it doesn't recognize that my schedule queries are enabled. One sec, I kind of think maybe I should just refresh this browser. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Okay. Sometimes you just have to refresh your browser and I guess it works. But yeah, if I change this to 21,000, then I could come in here and click update scheduled query and it will update this existing scheduled query to now be this. But since we don't want 21,000, let's just change it back. So that's how you do a scheduled query. And every day this is going to run and it's going to take, I mean, there's not new data coming into this because it ends in 2018. But if this was a live table every day when this ran, it would basically overwrite this table with the new data. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, I might be made two of these different tables. I don't understand. Um, that's weird. I've never seen that before. I guess there's two different tables with the same name. I think it's just an error. But that's how you create a scheduled query. Actually, I, I realized 
I just wanted to clarify it. There's a space at the beginning of this table. So you can't create two tables with the same, the same name. There's actually a space at the beginning of this table that I must have goofed up and typed somewhere. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I think that might be in my schedule query. Let's see. Yep, here it is, the space. So anyway, now it should be good. Um, and this space table we can delete oh. and you're doing live tutorials sometimes it doesn't go exactly right but anyway um, now you've got this table here that you can query just like any other table that is getting updated every day with whatever new data is getting inserted in here